Welcome to another week of worship. We are happy that you chose New Mount Zion. Some of you may be looking for a church home, a place to find friendship, visiting with your family, a place to serve, looking to know Christ better, seeking to understand where you fit into God's plan for mankind. Or you may not be sure of exactly what you are looking for. Whatever the reason, we hope this message is a blessing to you. Yeah. 
He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. And the truth of the matter is, if we had 10,000 times, we still couldn't thank him enough. We still couldn't thank him enough. And we're so grateful on today. We're so grateful on today. Glad to be in the service. One more time. We never know when it's our last time. But how many know that he's worthy? And no matter what the circumstance is, he's bigger than your problem. He's bigger than your problem. We thank God, amen, for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I tell you, he is the author and the finisher of our faith. When we say he's the author, that means he's the writer. It's because of him that it exists. And we worship him on today. Amen. He said, if you be ashamed to own me before me, and I'll be ashamed to own you. Yeah. Listen, you need to let folk know sometimes. Don't underestimate me because I'm wearing a new dress now. Don't let these new diamond earrings confuse you. Because I realize, well, where my help come from now? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I may be, you may be wearing a new outfit, you don't be, but you need to let somebody say, I know who gave me this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. And before we get, I want everybody to just hear me say, shine. Chapter number six. We're going to begin 
At verse number 36, and I want us to make sure that we read together, let us read out loud, amen. You may begin.
See, because watch this. You, if you have faith in God, but you don't apply the principles of God, then you can be a Christian that is cheating yourself out of what's really yours. Hello, somebody. Yeah, yeah, you can miss what really has already been assigned to you because of your faith and your relationship with Christ. But you're not applying all of the principles. And so therefore, it's almost like, it's almost like, it's almost like taking money that somebody has blessed you with and putting it in the fireplace. Can I get a witness? Notice here that Jesus wanted them to understand that you have an abundance. Look at verse number 36. And the first principle that I want you to write down that you've got to make sure you... In living in the old flow, you, you have to understand that your first thing is to aim to be like Christ. That's your first objective. Your first objective should be to aim to be like Christ. Because look at verse number 36. It said, be therefore what? Merciful as your father also is merciful. If you, if, you, if you want to if you want to move into that ultimate level listen you don't you want to be like Christ All right. can I get a witness yeah yeah, yeah. you want to be able you want to be able to love your enemies yeah. hello somebody I know somebody wrecked your home I know she took your man y'all ain't gonna say nothing I know they put the lie on you about some so and so but listen you can't let that shipwreck your destiny yeah. Oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing. I know you've been hurting over something you've been through, but understand that if you really want God have for you, you got to aim to be like Christ. Can I get a witness? Listen, I know, listen, I love my mom and my daddy, but they introduced me to Christ, but I always heard them say, I want you to go further. And see, and that would mean, they would say, I just want to be an arrow that points you in the direction. I don't want to be the destiny. And that's what we have to let people know. Listen, listen, I want, if you see Christ in me, I want to point you in a further direction because I want you to know him the best that you can. And I want to know this question that how many want to be like Christ? Yeah, 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 yeah. He said, listen, if you, he would tell the disciples because what he said, there's rules to God's kingdom. And rule to God's kingdom. You can't just stumble into your overflow. All right. That's been why those of you who've been pressing and pushing and holding on, you've been sir, you you've been striving to come to church when you with a smile on your face, your heart been broken, but you're pressing your way and coming in the house. And then when God gives you your breakthrough because of that persistence, people then try to want to frown at you. But what they don't know is that what they see now is just a product. You been persistent when things got real tough. I listen, I'll be the first one to admit because sometimes at church, but we don't want to admit this. But how many ever came to church and you really just didn't feel good in your body? Y'all didn't y'all ain't gonna say that. I if some of you probably have made up and see your mind. Listen, I'm going to church, but I don't want to look at so and so. I don't want to see so and so. But when you got here, God moved in your spirit and you left different from the way you came. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. Y'all, y'all gonna get Sunday morning quiet on me right here. But you gotta tell somebody I had to push my way to where I am now. And what God has given me, the devil in hell can't take it now. <laughs> Jesus told him, He said, Listen, be merciful. And I looked at this a little bit closer. How is being merciful connected to an overflow? Because he was telling them, listen, you can't allow something in your natural to block your spiritual flow. You got to be merciful. Listen, sometimes you got to forgive before, listen, sometimes you got to forgive before somebody able to do something. So that your anointing can stay flowing because you can't get where God wants you if your heart is cluttered with hatred and anger and frustration because you frustrated, you can't clap your hands.
Child, don't stay away from the family reunion because two people don't like you. You strolling on up in there with your what would Jesus do shirt on or I say I'm God's child. God's prophet can't touch this. Talk to me like you got to learn to live in the overflow. Can you get a witness? He said be ye merciful as your father. He's merciful. In other words, he's saying, watch this, because everything we need, that old song, and I love it, I think one day we're going we're gonna to get a group that might remember this and can sing it for, I found all that I need, and I found it in the Lord. That's an old song that anybody under 35 probably don't know that, but we got to sing that sometimes, because how many know everything we need is in God? In other words, he said, he said be merciful as your father, he's merciful. If God, who has the whole world in his hand. If he's merciful, why shouldn't we adopt that characteristic? Can I get a witness? And notice here, he went on to talk to his disciples. He was telling them, listen, I want to help you to move into a greater place so that you can protect your heart because if your heart is messed up, it'll block God's flow. Hello, somebody. It'll, it'll, it'll block God's flow. You see, because what happened is, that there come a time when we'll be at church. But that's all it'll be. We'll be at church. We'll be here. Our body will be here. But our minds will be on the other side of town. I think two or three people can. I remember when I was a male Jordan when I was coming up in, in college. Years ago, there was a song they used to sing. Taxi. Take me to the other side of town. Then another song that said, my body is here, but my mind. Oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing. I think there's somebody here sometime on Sunday morning. Our bodies are here, but our mind on the other side of town. But I just want to know, is there anybody who's here today? Your body is here, and your mind is on Jesus. Touch your neighbor right quick and tell your neighbor, I'm living in the overflow. Jesus told him, look, 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 look at the next verse. I want you to see it. And I'm dealing with this in an expository way because I want us to really get it. Expository means to deal with it piece by piece so that we can get it. So if you look at this, he said in the next verse, the main thing he wants them to know, watch this, he wants them to understand that your objective should be not only to be like Jesus, but to keep a pure heart. Yeah. Keep a pure heart. That's the second thing you want to want to write down about living in an overflow. You got to keep a pure heart. If it takes one person, one person may have to say once a day, Lord, forgive me. Yeah. But if somebody else may have to say it every hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or every minute. And some of us have to stop saying while we're in the middle of saying it. But whatever it takes for you, that's what you need to do. Lord, I done battled for 30 years with my mouth, and I know it's not going to change overnight. So, Lord, I should have said that like that. Forgive me. Oh, y'all ain't going to say that. You, we, we, you got to take authority over that because watch this. Every time you clean up that situation, God puts you back in that overflow place. And so the enemy will do everything he can to pull you out of that because he know in that overflow is your healing, your financial breakthrough. He know the door that coming over to you. All of that is in that overflow. He's going to try to do everything he can to pull you out of it. But somebody need to help me tell the devil too late, too late. Notice here, next thing he shared with them is that you got to watch these nuisance variables. These things that always show nuisance variables to scientists are things that show up in the middle of an experiment and they don't have to be put there, they just showed up. And as a growing Christian, there's certain things that our flesh just want to do. In verse 37, he said, listen, I want to help you understand. J 
judge or not. See, that's a nuisance there because we either the judge, girl, why she wearing her hair like that? We either the judge. Hello, somebody. And watch this. You don't know that that person, you don't know what they went through last night. Talk to me, somebody. You don't know, you don't know that that person might have almost had a fatal accident. You don't know that that person may be coming to church straight from the ER. You don't know what the case may be. So he said, judge not. Don't feed your flesh that stuff. Or you ain't going to say nothing. And you have to be conscious of that. You have to be conscious of that. To say, because notice it said, he said, judge not and ye shall not be judged. You're going to live in the overflow. You've got to get take charge of this because it's going to cause you to walk in this. He said, judge not that ye be not judged. Can I get a witness? So y'all got to help me preach right quick. Tell your neighbor, say, we can't judge one another. It's not, it's, we know that different. I know here with son. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Somebody think well, the Bible said tree know about the fruit of that. It didn't say that you wouldn't know. It didn't say you couldn't watch the tree. But don't judge somebody and in the sense of trying to talk to me. Don't judge somebody in the sense of trying to act like you're God over them because the truth of the matter is, if it had not been for the Lord bringing you out of some stuff. And right in the middle of us judging for what if the Lord would walk in. Yeah, I'm talking about in human form. While we judge somebody, he walk in. Okay, excuse me, I'm interrupting the service now. And so and so, I want to tell you, I want to tell the whole church what I done brought you through. Yeah. 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 He got a little captain riding behind him. And, it's, and your name is a Lord, please. I, I know I'm saved, but Lord, don't open up that captain. Because he done things for us that you wouldn't want him to go and tell for. Oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing. Because how many know that's some thing you said that you're not too proud of? That's some place that you've been, Lord, I know I shouldn't have went, but thank you, you brought me out. That's some thing I done said, Lord, I know my mama would turn over her grave if she heard me say that. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. So you have to be conscious that I'm not going to be guilty of judging folk. I'm not going to judge you. I help you, but I'm not going to judge you. I pray with you, but I'm not going to judge you. I'm, I, listen, I'll lend you a helping hand. I'll do what I, but I'm not going to judge you because I don't know what you and the Lord got going on. I don't know where God is bringing you from. I don't know what he's taking you to. I need y'all to help me. See, because when you stop judging and other people try to dump that stuff on you, you'll be like, I can't handle that. I got to stay in my overflow. How many of them found more peace since you to start minding your own business? I don't have time to worry about what's going on in Susan. I please, I pray for Susan, but I got enough stuff going on in my own house. Oh, y'all ain't gonna say nothing. I got to live in the, I got to keep my mind at ease so that I can get all that God has for me. Touch somebody one more time and tell them, so I'm living in the overflow. I'm living in it. I'm not just talking about it no more. I'm living in it. I'm not just going to sing about it. I'm not just going to preach about it. I'm not going to just read about it. But I'm going to live in this overflow. Now look what he says. He goes on, he says, condemn not. Yeah. You shall not be condemned. Yeah. Condemn not. All right. You shall not be condemned. Yeah. You know that word. That means, listen, sometimes we say people, you're no good for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you, ever, you ever met any people, listen, I don't care how saved you are now. I don't care how much you do in ministry, that some people that'll never forget what you did 40 years ago. Girl, she just like a mama. Oh, I forgot, I'm in Michigan. Me and that lady know what they talk about. They do that in Mississippi. They probably don't do that in Michigan. Child, the apple don't fall too far from the tree. 
In other words, when God packed blessings in your life, you have blessings on top of blessings. Can I get a witness? If you don't mind, reach over and touch somebody's hand and say, neighbor, not only do he bless me on Sunday, but he had a blessing for me on Monday. Not only do he bless me on Monday, but Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Tell him he keeps on a blessing. Can I get a witness? He said, press down and shake them together. Can I get a witness? And shake them together means he bleeds them up all in one. Thank God. And whatever he do for you on Baker Street, it'll show up in your house. Thank God. Whatever he do for you when you get in the choir, it'll show up on your job. Thank God. Is there anybody healed? And no God has shaken a blessing in your life. Tell somebody one more time and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I am determined to live in the overflow. Thank God. And look what he said. And they will be running over. Thank God. If you keep on walking with the Lord, thank God. If you keep on moving in the right direction, thank God. God will call blessing to run over. And to your children, thank God. Is there anybody here that know the blessings of God are running over in your life? Good evening to you. If you're not too mean, touch it somebody one more time and say, neighbor, I am determined to keep on living in the overflow. said that he calls me in to give unto you. Hey God, you remember the same people that laughed at you when you were down. God will call your enemy to put bread on your table. Hey God, I heard him saying, I will prepare a table before you of your enemies won't he do it for you did anybody here got a made up man that I'm living in the overflow if you're not too mean stand on your feet and look at somebody that's your neighbor it's my season it's my season and I'm living in the overflow
and it's been real bad. But every now and then when your pain gets heavy, you got to just say, Lord, if you don't help me. The doors are open. I can't stand the storm. Lord, if you don't help me. I'm gonna know you've been not just good, but I'm gonna know you've been real good. <laughs> I'm gonna know you've been real good to you. We get ready to get out of here, but just touch somebody and look and make sure you get the eye, eye to eye attention and tell them you've been real good to me. around in your wheelchair and you're in your house go on and just lift up your hands sometime in your house and just thank you Jesus for what you've done and anybody think what the day for what you've done in your life go on and slip your hand up in the antenna thank you Jesus someone here today and you know God has promised you an overflow place and there's something been trying to block you and you ready to confront that thing right now you ready to give it service eviction those because sometimes watch it now God can do for us in private what he can openly but what happened is that when we when we admit it openly it exposes that thing and it give you another added power strip because now you done overcome the shameless that the enemy try to make you smother in. And there's somebody here today who's been burdened down, who's been, who's been hindered from moving into that which God has for them. You're that person. I want you to come. I want you to come today. Let us step to our feet.
thank you for visiting with New Mount Zion. We hope this message has been a blessing to you and that you join us again next week. You may also join us every Sunday at 1045 a.m. for our morning worship service under the direction of Pastor Alan Ray Bolton. New Mount Zion is located at 2117 Baker Street in Muskegon Heights. Our mission is to bring persons into a saving and redemptive relationship with Jesus Christ. We are a spiritual body whose only foundation is the Word of God. We fulfill our ministry as we preach and teach, pray and empower, forgive and reconcile. If you would like to learn more about our ministry, please call 231-726-2948. May God be a blessing to you and your family. Thank you.